But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Saviour. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honourable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Israelites, it is important to understand how the Most High operates. It is important to understand what is happening to you and our people collectively after a successful prayer. If you do not understand what is happening behind the scenes, you will mistake the Most High's interventions in your life for failure. By doing this, you give Yah's glory to another. The scriptures inform us that the Most High will not share his glory with anyone. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Israelites, I want everyone to understand this perfectly. The Most High do not find pleasure in our suffering. The Most High wants to see his people succeeding and serving him. The scripture said the Most High searched the earth to locate whom he can show himself strong through. Yah want to find people he can use to accomplish his will in the physical realm. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. The Most High did not create us to suffer. If the Most High wanted his creation to suffer, then he would not have given us dominion on earth. In addition, give us the freedom to choose. The beast system have programmed many to accept being a bond man and bond woman for life. When our deliverance is here, many reject freedom to stay in bondage due to generations of programming by the kingdom of darkness. Our choices is keeping us in bondage. If you serve the Most High, He will provide, protect, and be there for you. If you choose to serve the kingdom of darkness, you are an enemy to the Most High. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. If the Most High wanted his people to stay in bondage, then he would not have awakened his people at this time. The awakening would not be taking place if the Most High want us to sit around and do nothing. When you pray, fast, and seek the Most High, you are taking action. When you engage in spiritual warfare, you are initiating a battle. Israelites, it is extremely important that you are prepared and know what you're asking for. Unity brings power into our nation. Unity allow our commander in chief, the most high, the ability to defend his people. The kingdom of darkness work overtime to keep us divided. The scripture said any kingdom or household divided would surely fall. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Because Israelites are coming together in the awakening to serve the Elohim of our fathers, a shift is taking place. We are no longer serving the image of the beast and the other idols of the nations. Due to many Israelites praying, fasting, and seeking the Most High, the people of the Most High is receiving support from the armies of the Most High. When you pray effective prayers combined with the sacrifice by fasting, this brings judgment on the nations and deliverance to the people of the Most High. Israelites, this is why it is important that you understand what is happening in the world today. Behind the scenes, a lot is happening. Spiritual warfare do not bring peace to your enemies or you. Spiritual warfare brings war. When the Most High was getting ready to deliver our ancestors from the land of bondage, the land of Mizraim, did not the Most High send multiple plagues to that nation? Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, 
and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt, and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. The Most High plundered the land of Mizraim, transferred the wealth of Mizraim to his people, the Israelites, as they were leaving the land of bondage into the next phase of their life. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor, and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver, and jewels of gold, and raiment. And ye shall put them upon your sons, and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. The plagues the Most High sent on Mizraim were judgment for the mistreatment of our ancestors, the Israelites. In addition, the idolatry Mizraim practiced. The way our ancestors brought the judgment of the Most High upon the land of Mizraim was through prayer and fasting. The scriptures reveal to us that the cries of the children of Israel reached the ears of the Most High. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. When the Most High hear your prayers, he will deliver you if you are serving him in the spirit and in truth. There is no good thing will the Most High withhold from those who walk uprightly. Today, a lot is happening in this generation. We are witnessing plagues after plagues on the nations. Many Israelites mistake those plagues with the kingdom of darkness imitations of the Most High. Israelites, you have to understand how the deliverance process works. When enough of our people humble themselves and serve the Most High, change will come. Many are expecting the changes to come as they have seen on television. Israelites are expecting to see all of their problems disappear. They believe they will no longer be oppressed by the kingdom of darkness. Israelites, your problems are not going to disappear. What will happen is the strongholds the kingdom of darkness used to keep you in sin will no longer control you. When the iniquity that was keeping you bound cannot control you, you have mastered sin and you elevate spiritually. Therefore, the kingdom of darkness cannot use the same devils to keep you bound. The unclean spirits that were oppressing you can no longer influence you to stray from the Most High. Israelites, the unclean spirits are still there. However, you have the upper hand when you gain victory over them through spiritual warfare. When you mature spiritually, you will meet new devils. This is why you find yourself under a great deal of pressure and calamity surrounds your life in the mix of a breakthrough. It is through the storm you mature. It is through the pain the change comes. Do not mistake the calamity and pain for defeat. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Pain bring change. Remember, Israelites, you are on a battlefield. The kingdom of darkness is not going to stop oppressing you. Satan will attack you to discourage you and to break the connection you have with the Most High. If he is successful in interfering with the connection, he can stop you from gaining your breakthrough. The decisions you make every day have consequences. Do not allow emotions to dictate your move. Do not bring emotions on the battlefield. Your emotions is an enemy to you on the battlefield. Leave your emotions in the locker room. After the battle, use your emotions to praise the Most High. Before our ancestors could leave the land of Mizraim, the Most High put his people in a hard predicament. Moses and the Israelites had to display great faith before they could leave the land of bondage. The Most High will test you, Israelites. You have to pass the test. 
Once Pharaoh realized what he had done by letting the Israelites go, he changed his mind and decided to pursue the Israelites. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot, and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them in camping by the sea, beside pi Hiaroth, before baal -Zavon. Our ancestors witnessed the Most High move on their behalf. The Most High stripped Mizraim of their wealth. Our ancestors were leaving bondage with plenty of resources to start their new life. On their way to freedom, at the last minute, the Israelites had their back against the wall. They had the Red Sea on one side, Pharaoh and his armies descending upon them on the other side. Our ancestors were put in a position where they had no choice but to call on the Most High and put their trust in the Most High. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. In the midst of their deliverance, the Israelites were facing obstacles. The Most High placed his people in a predicament where only he can deliver his people to display his glory. The Most High parted the sea to allow the Israelites to walk on dry land. Once his people reached the other side, the Red Sea returned to its natural formation, destroying Pharaoh's army in the process. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. The Most High display his powers to show his people that he is more than capable of delivering them and leading his people. Through his sovereignty, the heathen nations will come to the knowledge that he is the supreme ruler of all. In addition, the Most High display his glory for the world to know that he was the one that delivered his people out of the land of bondage. The Most High could have taken his people on another route. Yah parted the sea to show his people and the heathens what he can do. Yah's power is so incredible that we are still talking about this miracle in this generation. We are the generation waking up from our slumber and returning to serving the Most High. In the mix of our return, like our ancestors, we are facing challenges as well. This is a part of the process. The awakening is not going to be an easy journey where you're not going to experience challenges. In the mix of serving our Father and the Most High fighting our battles, we will face difficulties. Humble people serving the Most High brings personal deliverance and judgment on the nations that afflict them. The scriptures inform us that the Most High want His people to humble themselves, pray, and seek His face. By following His instructions, the Most High will remember the covenant He made with our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and heal our land. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. In order to heal our land, the Most High has to cleanse the land, take from the heathens what they have stolen, and return the stolen goods to his people. In order for the change to happen, plagues and wars will come upon the nations. Nations will rise against other nations. There will be rumors of wars. 
earthquakes and other natural disasters ravishing the nations. The Most High used these plagues to bring judgment upon the nations and to rescue his people. The Most High always have multiple purpose for a trial. In addition to bringing judgment, the Most High is fulfilling prophecy. What is happening in this generation are signs and the beginning of the birth pain. The end is yet to come. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The Most High will work through his angels and people to show himself strong through. The Most High will use the animals to bring judgment and to display his glory. Remember Daniel in the lion cage and the donkey the Most High used to warn Balaam. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? Do not forget about the animals the Most High used to plague the land of Mizraim. Israelites, you have to use discernment. The kingdom of darkness will try to imitate the Most High to distract you from the judgments of the Most High. Yeshua prophesied that our enemies would afflict our people and kill us. We would be hated in all the nations. The heathens hate that we are exposing the truth. The synagogue of Satan hates that we are boldly stating to be the blood descendants of the Israelites. The converts are offended and they seek to slander us in their media. Our people in religion betray us for not practicing religion and forsaking the house of bondage. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. While the Most High is fighting for us in the awakening, the scriptures are being fulfilled. The prophecies are happening through the actions of people. Israelites, the Most High will use the heathens to destroy themselves. What they meant for evil, the Most High will use the same evil to destroy them. The Most High always return our enemies' evil deeds back to them. I am a living testimony of the Most High returning to my enemies their evil deeds back to them. The heathen Haman plotted against the Israelites and Mordecai. Haman built gallows to hang Mordecai. Once the Most High intervened in his servant Mordecai's persecutions, the same gallow he prepared for Mordecai was used to hang Haman and his children. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows, fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified, because Haman the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast pur, that is, the lot, to consume them and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. Biochemical warfare, wildfires, low birth rates, infirmities of all sorts, natural disasters, and wild animals dying in large numbers in this generation, regardless if it was manufactured in a lab by the heathens, the Most High will use what they meant for evil to tear down their kingdoms. Israelites, acknowledge the Most High in all that you do, and he will direct your path. With all the evil in this world, do not allow the kingdom of darkness to distract you. Now is not the time to forge covenants 
with the spirit of fear and any other foul spirits. We have to learn to watch the right hand of the Elohim of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, move on our behalf. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright as an heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Religion did not teach our people to serve the Elohim of our fathers. Religion taught many to serve idols. Many Israelites are meeting our father for the first time in the awakening. Religion taught our people to let the image of the beast do all the work for them. Because many Israelites are not aware of how the Most High operate, they live in fear. Do not let fear have the final say in your life. In the mix of the Most High moving on our behalf, we have to ask the Most High for his perfect peace that surpass all understanding to rest upon the remnant of his people. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Israelites, you have to believe in the Most High. You have to believe he is capable of providing, protecting, and saving his people. Despite of what the outside condition appears to be, the Most High needs you to trust him. When you pray, be prepared for the results of your prayers. As long as you are in the physical realm, you will go through trials and persecutions. Israelites, do not mistake the trials that are meant to deliver you and elevate you for the so-called curses. There is a difference. The curses are upon the wicked of our people who refuse to repent and serve the Most High. Trials that bring change are meant to elevate you and give birth to something new. In addition, bring the judgment of the Most High on the wicked. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. The Most High has to mess with your character to get you where he needs you to be before he can give you the desires of your heart. I have never received anything from the Most High without first going through something. All of my blessings came with fiery trials. Now that the prophesied awakening is in full effect, there are no idols in between the Most High and the remnant of his people. We have tapped into an unstoppable power that is working for us. It is time that we recognize the power. Do not allow the beast system to make you believe they are greater than they appear to be. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Year of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We have to learn how to work with the Most High to triumphant over the kingdom of darkness. The fiery trials are coming with a shift and many blessings. The wicked are being judged every single day. How can the first become last and the last become first if the Most High do not judge the wicked? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. The Most High has given us power to overcome the entire kingdom of darkness. When we come together and Israelites are working out their own salvation with fear and trembling, we will see the Most High move on his people's behalf. The way the Most High choose to execute judgments are never going to be the way we expect. The scriptures inform us that the Most High's ways are greater than ours is, and his thoughts are greater than our thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. There is a reason the wicked censor many channels that are not plugged to the beast system. The wicked are feeling the pressure. Israelites, we have to hang on and continue to engage in activities that will allow the Most High to move on our behalf. The wickedness of the heathens is not going anywhere until the times of the heathens are fulfilled. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. 
Do not allow what is happening in this generation to discourage you or cause you to panic. The Most High said he would never leave us nor forsake us. In addition, he will save us out of Jacob's trouble. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Israelites, you have to make the decision to stand with the Most High. As the Most High continue to renew your minds, believe in the power he has given to his people. Ask the Most High to make your enemies your footstool. If you believe that he can make your enemies your footstool, the Most High will grant you the desires of your heart. Do not allow anyone to make you feel bad for wanting deliverance. We spent too much time forgiving our enemies. Now is the time to call on the Elohim of our fathers to vindicate his people. Israelites, keep praying, keep fasting, and keep seeking the Most High. The more we do his will, the sooner the kingdom of darkness will be dethroned. You have the opportunity to turn everything around. Do not mistake the increase of troubles in this generation with the Most High not answering our prayers. It is because Yah is answering our prayers, there is an increase of disasters. Israelites, the Elohim of Israel wants to save his people. Place your trust in the Most High. He will not fail you. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee. Though I make a full end of all nations whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished.